Hello and happy Monday, everyone. I am here at the clubhouse, and I can't believe it. I'm actually in the last week of this COVID boot camp. It's been a pretty awesome adventure, you know. Started out, and uh, I feel like I had a pretty good understanding of programming. I guess you could say, like, I felt like I was pretty good, and I think really, like, at the end of this week, you know, the last couple of weeks, I've been making just little apps and stuff like my Laravel app that I made a couple videos ago and um, and I did a bunch of Google Cloud demos like I've been doing these things that you know I wouldn't have really well understood all the way from beginning to end but now I feel like at this point I really get it um, and I really think it has to do with going through all the fundamentals of web development from beginning to end this bootcamp covered HTML, CSS, JavaScript, and PHP. And even though those are the languages we focused on, since I had previous programming knowledge, I feel like I feel like I learned more about things like C and C. Like if you look at my videos, I've become more proficient in C and other languages because I've really, 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 really learned like PHP very solidly. And I understand JavaScript very solidly and there are two very different pro there are two different there are two very different languages you can do pretty much you really can't do the same thing with them but you, you know like the way that their programming styles are set up it helped me learn a lot about other languages so I think that beyond just learning those basic web development tools in this course and even get like I really am a mass I would say I would be surprised if you could throw me a, a problem with Git that I wouldn't be able to understand because it's just like a tool to me now. You know, it's like, yeah, that's what I used to keep track of my code. Like, if there was a problem, I would figure it out. It's not a big deal. Like, it's not even, not even a problem at all. So I just feel like I'm really proficient in all those things and really proficient in Visual Studio Code as the editor and like just quick at putting things together and like really getting to what I need to get to. And, you know, another really good benefit about this is was able to find a very good job here in Augusta. That was that was very difficult to do. Um, so, you know, getting it here in Augusta is great, and I think that I'll be able to go in and really perform at the level that I, I am capable of because I did this boot camp. So, just can't believe that I'm on the Monday, of the last week of the co boot camp. It's really crazy. It's been an awesome adventure. Um, so. Today, what we did basically this morning is we, we went through this to-do MVC, this thing that Adi Osmani set up, and we've just been working through this, and in the afternoon, we're, we're going to work on frameworks, you know, the frameworks that we're interested in. My dad just gave me a book that was written in 2010 on ASP.net, so, uh, you know, some people are very much against reading a book on programming, They're like, you can find everything on the internet, uh, but... Like I, I am. I don't mind. I don't mind trying more than one thing. Like what I will do is I'll go through the the W three schools tutorial on ASP.NET because that's very quick and that can be done within a day. And then after I finish that, I'll go all the way through this whole entire textbook, which will probably take me like three months. But at the end of it, you know, I'll really understand all the features and attributes of that language and how to use it really well, how to optimize things, and even if I. Okay, so I'll got to be careful because I don't want I don't want people to take my advice and say, "Oh, I read this book, now I know this." I think you really gain knowledge when you read the book, and then you close it, and you go and you try and do something. I and that works for me. It doesn't work for everyone, but I've noticed that like this is I guess I'll share this tip. This is the way that I read. This isn't how I read for fun. Sometimes I do, but like when I'm reading a textbook, this is the one thing that I've noticed has really helped me. I'll go to the chapter. First, I'll go through the contents of the textbook because sometimes some books you don't have to read in order. And I'll look at like, you know, what is what is the thing that I want to learn the most and what steps do I have to go, what steps do I have to cover to get to that point? So I try to figure out what the prerequisite knowledge is for that chapter. And if I don't have that, I go back and I refresh myself on those things. That's rule number one. Don't read stuff that you don't understand because you're doing yourself a disservice and you're wasting time. What I do is, Get to that chapter that you're interested in and literally flip through the entire chapter. So like go through each page, look at each page, just look at the figures, read some captions, just go through. Because what you'll do subconsciously is you make this map of the stuff in the in the chapter. 
And like, you're going to know what to expect. And sometimes for me, I anticipate what's going to be the harder part of the chapter or what's going to take a little bit more time. And I'm not surprised. I'm not surprised I don't get it because I've anticipated it. And I, if you do go through that whole chapter, then at the end, you kind of see how everything's going to be brought together into something. So that's like kind of relief for me. Like, this is going to, this is going to come to an end. It's just like on YouTube when you see like a tutorial, you want to make sure they finish whatever they're showing you because everyone's been in that spot where it's like, okay, this isn't really finished and you're trying to tell me how to do it and you don't even know how to do it yourself. That is really frustrating. So, you know, just go through that chapter real quick first time. And then for me, when I'm starting it, I do 20 minute intervals. It's called the Pomodoro technique. And I start like that. And I don't always do that. I'll do that first 20 minutes and then I'll find like after that I'll be able to read for an hour. But I gotta get into it, I gotta get into the groove. And sometimes I have to reread re over something. So go through the chapter first, read a little bit, take a break, come back, read again. And then this is the real test. Go back through and look at all the stuff that you covered and then go in and try, go and either try and apply it or like maybe take the time to go make a map that shows you what you learned and how it applies to what you're doing. Like, write it down because that will solidify the concepts for you. Because uh, sometimes learning is just getting some information, being able to understand how it connects together. That's that's the important thing. Um, but yeah, that's how I read. So I go through everything first, then I read it, and then I go back over it, and then I figure out how it applies. I'm sorry if there's construction. There's just like a lot of annoying things in this building right now, and. Um, it's just super important for me to document what I'm doing, but I apologize about that. Um, yeah, so I got a lot of that information from this really wonderful book called, it was called A Mind for Numbers. Barbara Oakley. I had to read this book as a tutor at UNC, and this really helped me learn how to do things. So, all right, there's some people talking here, so I'm sure there's people. Have you ever see someone talking in a hallway? Just have like the consideration to say, hey, you know what? Like this person's trying to do something, and maybe right now is not the time to have like an outrageously uncontrolled laugh about stuff. It's really interesting how some people tend to just like want to be purposely disruptive, but whatever. Anyways, this is the book that I read when I was a tutor at UNC. It's really cool. I highly recommend it. Even if you're not into math or science, it's a really... She really went over a lot of ways to learn creatively. So I would definitely recommend checking it out. But uh, since there's literally a war of saws going on out there and armies of people coming in and out of this hallway, I think now, I don't even know if you can hear me, I think now is actually probably a good time to end this video. So I hope everyone has a wonderful Monday and, you know, thank you for watching. I'm sorry about the disturbance.